We're going to build a Bootstrap navigation bar using Bootstrap 5 and all the latest features that come along with it. In this video, we're going to build out this navigation bar. I'm going to take you through the whole process of setting up Bootstrap, creating all the things that you need, such as the components and buttons and how to make sure that it's responsive and just works. If you don't know who I am, I'm Adrian from Australia. I do videos around design and development. So if you guys haven't already, hit like and subscribe and let's just jump straight into it. The first thing we'll do is head over to Google, head over to the Bootstrap website and jump onto getbootstrap.com. Here we've got everything to get us started with Bootstrap 5 to build this navbar. What we're going to do is head over to introduction and scroll down a little bit to the starter template. This has all the files that we need to start our project. This includes the CSS that we have up here, as well as the JS, so that we can build out all the features and functionality that we need. We're going to copy this over into a new file in VS Code. I'm going to call this index.html, and we'll paste that all in here. The next thing we want to do is jump over to extensions and go live server, and this will run up the server that we'll be using to run this website. Now I've already got it installed, but you can install this extension and then simply hit F1 and open up live server to preview it. Let's start by customizing the content that we have here. I'm going to rename the title to Bootstrap 5 Navbar Tutorial. And I'm going to also get rid of all the comments and the H1 block so that we can start off with a fresh page. I'm going to hide the head tag and move everything down a little bit so we can work with the room that we have over here. We'll create our very first tag here, which is a nav, and we can expand this out to immediately add some content. But before we do that, I'm going to add a couple of classes here. I'm going to add the navbar class here. I'm also going to add a navbar dash light class. And finally, I'm going to add in BG dash light. These classes will give some custom styling to the navbar. So if we have a look at it here, we can see it existing. The background color is very subtle. We might not see it. If we change it to maybe primary, we can see it turns blue. But for the time being, we'll just have it as light. The next thing we'll want to do is maybe add an element in here that might be the title or the logo. For this case, I'm just going to add a span in here, which will be the navbar brand. And this is where we'll add in maybe something like uh, the title of it. So I'm just going to pass in navbar in here. We'll add a couple of extra classes here. So I might remove the margin at the bottom. So I'll do MB dash zero. And I'll also pass in H1 to give it a bit of a bold color there. This should get us up and running for a basic navbar, but we don't have any buttons yet. We don't have even any logos. There's a couple of things we can do here to add some stuff in. So what I might do is I might add in, say, an image or an A tag to our navbar text here instead of a span. So I'm going to simply rename this span to A and pass in href with a hashtag. We can add in our own link in here in the future, but for the time being, this is enough to get us up and not running. And you can see it's more or less the same. It's just a clickable item now. The next thing I'm going to do is maybe add an image in here as well. So for the image, I'm just going to use one of the Bootstrap logos, which is just over here. And uh, let's pass that in and close this off. So this in itself is the full URL in case you guys are interested. And for the height and width, that's just 30 pixels and 30 pixels. So let's paste that in here underneath and close this off. If we add this in, it doesn't really have any classes yet. So I'm going to add a couple of classes to it. So for those classes, I'm going to add in D line block. This will make it a display of inline block. And let's make sure that we spell that correctly. And we're also going to do a line dash top. And this will make sure that the alignment is to the top of this section. So far, we don't really see any changes, but we can see that it exists just over here. Okay, great. With that done, we can now create the actual buttons that we need for our navigation. We're going to create a brand new tag for this, and maybe we'll just do a div in this case. We're going to add some bootstrap classes to make this function correctly. So I'm going to add in the class collapse, and I'm also going to add in the class navbar collapse as well. And these will formulate later to ensure that this this tag here basically has some responsive design that 
um, causes this nav bar to function properly. We might add in some buttons later for mobile responsiveness. And in order for them to function, we need to apply an ID. So here I'm going to pass in a nav bar nav ID, and we'll use this a little bit later on. So let's make sure that this is all aligned nicely. And we'll have a look at our next section here, which is creating the list for our nav bar. For a list, I always recommend a UL. So this is a UL here, and we'll also pass in the class nav bar nav. And here we'll have a couple of list items. For our first list item, we'll pass in the class nav item. And our first item is usually active, so we'll pass that class in as well. This can be anything, but usually we want to add in an A tag because this is how we're going to identify this is a link. And for this A tag, we also want to pass in nav dash link for the class, which we can stylize later. But there is a custom bootstrap styling that is applied. We'll have this as just home for the time being, and we can copy this across a few times to have a few different buttons, so such as features maybe, or pricing, because we haven't actually expanded it up in the navigation. So to do that, we're going to pass in one more class to our very um, to our parent here, the nav parent, and we'll pass in navbar dash expand dash LG. And we'll actually change this LG to SM because we're very much zoomed in, and it might not apply until we zoom out a lot. But when we zoom out to about 200%, we can see that the menu is available over here and working. There are classes we can now apply to customize this navbar. The very first is the active class, which I feel isn't working properly here on the home section. So I'm gonna also add it into the nav link. And when we do, we can see that this class here is a little bit darker than the other ones. The other thing we can do is add a disabled class. So let's actually pass this into features. And when we do, we can see that features essentially is now grayed out. And if we try to click on it, we can't. While well, we can click on home and pricing, features is now disabled. So this is a few of the classes that you can use to start customizing how the nav bar works to give you a better idea. Finally, if we resize this window, we'll see that the nav bar does hide when we shrink down to a smaller viewport than SM. So this is where we need to start adding in a button to be able to toggle the nav bar itself. Let's actually create that right now. So I'm going to pass in the tag here called button. And we're going to add in a class and this class will be our nav bar toggle. And the class that Bootstrap likes for this is just called toggler. So let's pass that in here. And for this button, we're going to add in a couple of additional attributes. So I'm going to pass in type and the type for this will be button. We'll also pass in a data attribute and this data attribute will be called toggle. And for toggle, we're going to pass in collapse. This is the class that we'll be applying the toggle to. The other thing we're going to do is pass in a data target. And this target will be that ID we created earlier when we were doing the nav bar, which is just down here, the nav bar nav. And we're going to also add in the hash there. So that is our target. Make sure we spell that correctly. Beautiful. We'll also add some accessible um, tags here. So this will include aria controls. And here we'll pass in nav bar nav. We'll pass in aria expanded and this will be called false and we'll pass in aria uh, label and this will be what's happening itself so this is for people who need that accessibility and this essentially toggles the navigation so anyone who is hovering over this will get a better idea of what exactly is happening one more thing i forgot to add is the bs in front of data so it should be data dash bs dash toggle and data dash bs dash target so let's save that in and finally we can add in our logo or our um, icon or text that we have here for the button so let's actually resize this section here a little bit so that we can see our menu which when we do click on it it works but we can put in maybe a hamburger menu in here so bootstrap does provide a class for that let's pass in span dot uh, and the class for this will be, I believe, uh, let's have a look here, navbar toggler um, icon. So let's pass that in here, hit save, and there's our hamburger menu. 
When we select that, we can see now we've got our drop down, and as soon as we expand that out, it disappears. So, this is our simple nav bar so far, which is working quite well. But now let's see what we can do to customize this nav bar to make it work a little bit better. So, one thing you can do to customize the nav bar is change the nav bar expended SM. And we can change this to maybe MD, which will cause it to automatically be responsive unless we resize the page. Now, in this case, I'm just zooming in and out to show you what I mean. And we can even increase this to LG. This just means that the breakpoints at which the hamburger menu pops up will be different. Usually, I like to keep this as SM because in most cases, you should be able to see at least all the items here before it collapses. But if you do have additional items and you can't fit them all in, then it's always good to essentially make sure that it collapses a little bit earlier on. Sometimes, however, for your nav bar, you might not want it to expand out throughout the whole page from the whole left hand side to the whole right hand side. You might want it to be inside of a container. And to do this is quite simple. You simply put the nav bar inside of a parent that has container as its class. So let's do that now. We'll do a div with a class of container. Expand that out and put the nav bar inside. And we can see now that the nav bar is a little bit smaller, which works much better. Of course, if you want the content of the nav bar to be the stuff that is contained rather than the outside, we can move this container class inside. So let's actually expand this. Uh, sorry, let's actually put this div inside of the nav bar and refresh. And now we can see that the content of the nav bar is just strictly inside, but the nav bar is still full width. So this is pretty cool. Finally, some people like to make sure that if they have a large body, so let's say the body height here is maybe something like uh, 2000 pixels in height, and we can scroll down a little bit. And the nav bar disappears as you scroll down. Some people like to make sure that it's fixed at the very top of their website. So we can do that too. There's a class here that we add to our nav bar parent called fixed top. And if we pass that in, we can see that even when we're scrolling up and down, this nav bar is sticking at the very top, which is very useful as well. So this can be one way that you can perform this functionality without adding all extra CSS on top of it. Now, let's take a look at how to do a drop down because they're very popular, especially when you have a menu. And there's a few different ways we can do them, but in terms of bootstrap, it's quite easy. The first thing we want to go to is our items here. So we've got uh, our list items and I'm going to go to the features one and I'm going to select this one here and create this one as a drop down. Uh, this class here will notify that this list item is now a drop down. So the link won't work. Rather, it'll cause a drop down effect. The next thing we want to do is go to the A tag here and pass in drop down toggle. And this will ensure that this class works as a drop down toggle. We can also add an ID. So in this case, I'm going to do nav bar uh, drop down. And we're going to set the role of this link as a button. Finally, we'll also pass in a data-bs-target. This is the target we want it to use when we're doing the dropdown. So I'm going to pass in the class dropdown in this case. And finally, we're going to pass in some accessibility information. So expanded here can equal to currently false. This gives us the information that we need for the A tag. Now let's create the actual dropdown itself. So for this, it's quite simple. We can just pass in a tag. A UL is a nice and simple one that we can use. And then we can just pass in a couple of classes in this UL as well. The first class will be drop down this dash menu to let us know that this is a drop down menu. And some accessibility can be added in here as well. So in this case, I'm going to do labeled by. And here we're going to pass in the ID that we passed on the A tag. Finally, let's create our list of drop down items. So I'm just going to do an li and an a tag here. For the a tag, I'm going to call this a drop down item. And we might call this feature one. And let's copy this across a couple of times with feature two and feature three. The only change we have to do here is for the data dash bs dash target. And we need to change this to toggle. I accidentally called this the wrong thing, but more or less everything stays the same. And now if we have a look at our menu here, if we click on the features, then we get our drop down here for feature one, feature two and feature three. Something important to note is that this is also responsive. So if we shrink this page down, 
to a mobile version and we select features, we can see that it actually expands out correctly, even in the mobile view. And this is really important because in the past, sometimes having these drop downs can be very difficult to do. Now that we have this bootstrap menu up and running, there's a few customizations we can do, which are really easy that can be done at the parent level to customize the entire nav bar without having to worry about what's happening too much. So in this case, I'm going to change this to a dark theme background. And we'll change this class here, BG dash light to BG dash dark. And here for nav bar light, we'll change this to nav bar dark. As soon as we do, we can see the nav bar is now in dark mode with the text being white and everything else adapting as you need. We can set it to other colors too. So for example, we could set the BG color here to primary. And now we've got a blue color, or even we could add our own custom color for the background color, such as a CSS, maybe red, and this applies as well. This is some of the different ways that you can create some custom styling for your nav bar if you want. And it allows us to really make changes on the fly, depending on what you want to do. Finally, sometimes nav bars have a maybe a form at the end of them. So let's actually add one in here to see what that looks like. For a form, I'm just going to add a simple tag here called form. I'm going to do a display flex uh, for the class. So that's deflex. I'm not going to add in any actions. Here's our form. We're going to add in an input. And for this input, I'm going to add a couple of classes. I'm going to do form control. This will create some of the styling we need for the input. And I'm going to also pass in me dash two. This is our form and we can see its input is just here at the top right and it's working just fine. We might want to add some text or a button here as well. So I'm going to add a button with the class of BTN, which is a bootstrap class as well as BTN dash outline dash success. And this is the one that we can click to get it to maybe do a search. So let's tab this out and type in search and we'll also change the button type to button here. And oh, actually, sorry, since this is a form, we'll do it to submit. And this is more or less ready to go. We can see that the button is here. I might change this to primary since it might look a little bit better. Or we could even just remove this entirely and just do button dash maybe white, I think, or button dash primary, sorry. And this looks much better. So we've got our button here at the top right. If we resize it, we can see that it takes the sizing depending on what we're doing. And as soon as we get to a smaller size, the menu does hide, but the search bar stays there. And if we continue to shrink it down, we might have to do some custom styling for it, but that might be as part of a future video. This should cover all the aspects that you need to get a basic bootstrap nav bar up and running. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Make sure you guys hit like and subscribe and all that other jazz. Otherwise, I've got heaps of other bootstrap videos on my channel. You can check them out. And I'm doing a full bootstrap crash course, which is coming soon. So stay tuned for that.